So what sort of capability does Global Hawk give to you with this uh, uh, hurricane monitor? Global Hawk gives us several capabilities. One is with its uh, long range and, and uh, long flight duration, we're able to cover, um, you know, we're able to get out to storms that we can't normally get to. With manned aircraft, typically in the past when we've flown hurricane campaigns, we've done them out of Florida, and with a 10 hour flight duration, you can only get out maybe as far as Puerto Rico. So we had to wait for the weather to come to us. With Global Hawk, we can go to the weather and, and sample the entire Atlantic. Uh, the other advantage, again, being that long duration, is if we have a storm that's closer to the coast, instead of spending maybe only four to six hours uh, sampling the storm, we're sampling it for maybe 18 to 20 hours. So it gives us a lot more time to observe the storm and to be able to cover a much bigger area within the storm. Um, and then the last capability is its high altitude, which allows us to basically get a top-down view of the storm, looking at it almost as if we were a mini satellite uh, getting measurements from above rather than having to be below or within the storm and, and maybe getting a more limited view. Okay. And what are your overall, uh, what are the main things that you hope to learn as part of this uh, multi-year program? Well, we're really trying to better understand uh, the, the processes that control hurricane intensity change. Uh, you know, the ability to predict uh, hurricane intensity change is still fairly poor. There's a lot of times where you may have a storm approaching. And you, 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 a good example is Hurricane Charlie from 2004 where people went to bed thinking it was going to be a Category 1 storm and woke up to find a Category 3 or 4 storm in the morning. So we want to better understand how those rapid changes in intensity can occur um, and how we can better forecast those. Uh, what we're really trying to figure out especially is the relative roles of the large scale environment versus the smaller scale processes occurring within the storm. We don't know if it's more driven by those large scales and the smaller scales are being driven by those larger scales or if the large scales just provides the framework in which the smaller scales do all the work to intensify the storm. So that's what we're trying to sort out, and that's why we have the two aircraft, one to look at the environment and one to look at the inner core structures. Okay. Right in the nose is a nose camera. Looks straight out. Then right behind that, right underneath the, the nose, is what we call the cloud physics LIDAR. Now that's a laser that shoots out and it goes down and the light is scattered back and there's a big telescope there that collects that light coming back. Now because it's a laser and you know the speed of light, you can detect exactly where these clouds and dusts are from that laser. So that's a really important uh, instrument for understanding the structure of clouds and things below the plane. Now in the belly of the plane here is what we call the scanning high resolution infrared sounder, scanning his. Now scanning his is an instrument, it measures upwelling infrared radiation. And that radiation will tell you things about, you can derive from that, the temperature profile. So it's very warm at the surface, gets colder as you come up. They can actually d describe with that infrared radiation that temperature profile. They can also tell you things about cloud structure and the relative humidity. So the water vapor that you see below the plane, where it's really moist below the plane and so forth. And then finally in the tail is the drops-on system. There's a little tube poking out the back of the tail, and these little instruments are, it's a, about a paper towel roll size instrument comes out of the back there through that tube. A little plunger pops it out. It's a big Coke machine full of these, and it gets fed down to the tube, and the plunger pops it out when we tell it to, and it falls. It has a little parachute on it. As it falls, it measures temperature, the relative humidity, the wind, and the pressure. And so that's a, we have about, uh, we can carry up to 89 of those little drops-ons as we go, uh, as we fly along, and we punch them out every 10, 15, 20 minutes as we fly along. And it gives you a, a beautiful detailed structure of a hurricane or a tropical storm.